So for lapping like size three, size four planes, I made myself a little, what I will generously call a jig. Um, it's, <laughs> it's wet dry sandpaper uh, glued to MDF. I labeled what the grits are so I can remember. Um, so this is 180 grit and then this is 220 grit. Um, basically getting a plane to 220 is enough to keep it flat. My handy Windex. And I keep a Sharpie in my apron, literally just for lapping planes. Handy trick to tell if you're done. Draw some lines on the bottom. When the lines are gone, you know it's flat. So actually with lapping, you want to put everything back together. Um, because a plane will flex when you put tension into it to keep the iron in. And what you want is the plane to be flat when you're using it. So like this, this bit will, unbeknownst to you, flex a little bit as you add more tension to keep the iron in place. So just back off the iron a bit so we're not scratching the iron. These little 102 block planes are really fiddly. No, still too much iron in there. There we go. See, now there's no iron in the mouth, uh, but the tension is still in the in the plane. So now, now we can work on lapping it. Yeah, you can tell it's real dirty. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's just dirt. That's not even rust, that's just dirt. But you can see, with just a few seconds of lapping on 180 grit, we're already getting some parts here. It looks like this bit is not super flat, so we're gonna keep going. And just like with your sharpening stones, you want to keep uh, your wet, dry sandpaper uh, fairly wet to get all the to get all the swarf um, out there. Swarf is just all the stuff that comes off. And when you're playing, when you're lapping, you want to put equal pressure across the whole thing so that it all stays flat. <laughs> My workbench is wobbly because it's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I can see that there's still a flat spot right there in the middle. I mean, it's not really going to affect the plane too much uh, because really the important parts are by the mouth, the toe, and the heel. You want all of those to be at the same level plane. Um, stuff in the middle isn't going to be too worrisome, um, but it is pretty grimy. Um, like, <laughs> I've got an impression of the, of the plane. Um, by just wiping it, so I'm gonna keep going for a little bit. So that's that's looking pretty good. Um, there's still some spots that are low, but they shouldn't really affect the plane too much. Plus, I'm not really gonna use it, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, I just wanted a little Ohio plane, this just look cheap. But I'm going to give it the good old restoration treatment. So same thing on the other side. 
draw your lines. When the lines disappear, you're good. So I didn't quite get all of the Sharpie marks off, but it's good enough uh, to be usable, honestly. Um, so you can really tell the difference between the sides that haven't been touched and the bottom, which is all nice and shiny now, even with just a 220 grit. Um, so 220 is honestly good enough. Um, you don't have to get too crazy with it. Uh, if I really wanted to work on the sides and get this all nice and polished up, um, I just get like some really, really fine, maybe like triple zero or e even like uh, quarter zero, quadruple zero, quadruple zero, um, steel wool, and then just kind of polish it a little bit um especially with hitting it with some simple green just polishing that up and then hitting it with some paste wax um to get it all nice and shiny but for the purposes of this i don't really feel the need to go too ham on it it is just like a little a little shelf queen for me just to say i have a little ohio plane um i am going to work on the iron though um just just in case i ever want to play with it so i'm skipping the extra course because the iron's already been um, touched. Um, so we're just going to go straight to the course. In the back, back and forth this way. good way to test if the lap if the back is flat is to just put it on here and then see if you feel it kind of get sucked together yeah there's some tension there there's some water tension there um so that was quick it was flat for as you can see here you really only need like an inch inch and a half of the of the back to be flat so now we're going to try to grind out some of those nicks. We're going to rock the iron back and forth until you feel the bevel register. Part of the reason why I only do a primary bevel is because it's easier to sharpen that way. Um, there's less stuff you have to, like, is this the primary bevel? Is this my secondary bevel that I'm feeling when I rock the iron? So just do that. I like to keep it at an angle. Helps me stay more consistent, especially as I do stuff across the iron. Um, if I have to do a lot of grinding, I'll actually do the figure eight pattern. And keeping it at an angle helps me keep it on the plate. And again, what you're trying to do um, with sharpening is get a nice burr. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, so I don't know if you can tell here, but what you want to feel is a burr. So this feathery bit that my nail is catching on, that's a burr. So the iron from this side has folded over with the sharpening to basically make a little feathery edge. Um, and basically what you're doing is folding it over to get just a clean edge. So I've got a really nice burr going on here. I'm going to take that off. So to take off burr, you really just place it down. You really just need that to get the burr off. This one's kind of a bigger burr because I was I was grinding a lot to try to get some nicks out. Okay. 
sometimes if you do it right, you'll actually see the, the entire burr stay on your plate. Um, so the reason I'm taking off the burr instead of uh, go, just going straight to the next grit is because I am trying to check and see if the nicks have disappeared. They kind of have, but not really. And um, beginner's trick for sharpening to tell if um, you're doing it right, you'll take your Sharpie. And then just mark your edge there. Just mark your bevel. Um, and then when all of these lines disappear, you know you've done it right. So my phone camera decided to die on me. Um, but basically, I went through the course, then the fine, uh, the exact same way. Um, and then did some stropping on the end um, to get all the burr off. Um, because it's going to leave like a feathery, like metallic uh, edge on your edge. Um, and you're basically bending the edge back and forth um, across your bevel, stropping on uh, some nice hardback leather with some compound is going to help you get the burr off completely because the burr is not the edge. The edge is what the burr leaves behind. Um, so stropping will help you with that. Um, typically I'll only strop maybe like 20 times on the primary bevel and then just maybe five times to lap to strop the back. I just like stropping the back because it makes sense to me that I'm moving the burr back and forth. Um, but yeah, put this bad baby back together. Uh, she looks pretty nice. Still definitely showing her age. Um, I'll show you the, show you the iron. Let's see, that's, that's a beautiful iron baby. So, let's see if I can focus on the iron. So that's nice shiny iron. What you're gonna see with freehanding is that you don't have this like uh, super, super um, straight bevel because you are moving back and forth. So it does create a little bit of a curve, uh, but that's honestly not a problem. Uh, what you want is just this point uh, to be a point at the very end. That's what your edge is. Um, some people will do uh, micro bevels or back, back bevels um, to get that point to be even finer and have a better lower angle of attack. Um, honestly, 25 degree primary bevel, flat back, um, gets you a very easy um, to work with uh, angle. It, it just works fine. Honestly, I prefer having less things to mess with. Um, so that's, that's how I freehand sharpen. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, um, things you want to see next, uh, in the comments below, uh, like, and subscribe, you know, the usual, the usual YouTube Yahoo. All right. See you next time.